Previously on Roleplay Radio. Captain Dapplewing, Mr. Fane, the broker, is here. At your request, the door opens. Oh, thank you very much, baby. Mm. Clean that up. <sighs> hey, Captain's always good to see you. And he, like, sits down on an armchair. Ah, puts his feet up on a footstool. Oh, well, if it ain't my favorite old employee. He's fingering the bookshelves. He's making himself at home very pompously. Oh, Fane, you... You look pretty comfortable. Oh, you know, this is, it ain't every day that I get invited to the captain's home. I know you help your ass in and all that, so you know. And the captain stands up, <laughs> leans into Griff's ear and says, I brought him here to terminate him. Would you like to do the honors? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What was that? Come on, I like to whisper too, baby. <laughs> oh, Holy chromatic shit. orb to the face. <laughs> no. Keep in mind, first when I said terminate, I meant fire. <laughs> <laughs> like on fire? No, like... Firing. Because I could do that. I could, I could do it really well. Rosie, I'm trying to set Gary and Kataras up. But the thing is, Kataras is completely oblivious. And we kind of want him to sort of stay that way. You know, they're roommates. So it could be kind of awkward if it doesn't go well, right? So we're trying to be careful with it. It also seems pretty clear that he's not actually interested because he specifically suggested that we find each other dates for a double date. What we're thinking is we set up this double date, right? Mm -hmm. But the other two people, they agree to the date, but something last minute comes up and they're not able to attend, leaving Gary and Kataras on a double date without their dates. Mistake. You see your childhood friend King walking in. Inspecting you from head to toe. He didn't hurt you anywhere, did he? Um, the, who? the Leonin. Oh, Griff? No, it's fine. It was an aggressive hug, and then I told him a joke and he stopped. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. But we, we both know it wasn't a joke. You did it to me. Can we trust him? Because from what I saw, he was helping first, and then he attacked you. And then he killed. Unconscious people couldn't defend themselves. Yes, we can't trust Griff. I know that for sure. He's... My friend has been my friend since last year. He wasn't entirely under his own control. Cos, you head back to Silverquill at the end of the day. On the other side, across the quad, you see Dario. He's reading something, and he just waves at you and just gives you the motion to climb up to the roof with him. I'm just worried sick. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. I could be better. I was really hoping for just like a normal year or something. I just want to tell you that, um, you know what? Ink starts to flow out of his sleeves, gather around in front of him, and then the black ink solidifies into a black guitar. It's only one way to communicate with you, Cos. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then everybody below begins clapping like, woo! Just, just where other people can't see us real quick, and then I'm gonna kiss him. Yay! Yay! I was gonna ask for permission, but bam. You got it. You wanna go to the fall festival with me? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. I really just feel like I'm having a tantrum. <laughs> I kicked Alex like three you did. times it's there. Okay. <laughs> it's great. Give me your energy. And now we can start officially with the fall festival session. But all in good time. We're not in a rush here. I would like to actually start with Mistake today. Okay. Mistake! For the last few months, has been dealing not just with classes and clubs and mysterious roommate drama. Mistake has also been working on a secret project unbeknownst to the party. Time is ticking on said project. Winter break is just around the corner, which means this project, this mission, is just around the corner. As classes wrap up that week, we fade in on tome wielding class. It's the last home wielding class of the fall semester. We fade in on mistake, and uh, Griff is sitting nearby. Rampart is also there, as is Enya. Handful of students that we know, and Dean Plarg is speaking. Now, this has been the reoccurring thing. Dean Plarg is a big talker. Now, granted, he is very charismatic, so they, they are interesting lectures, but he's very long-winded. <laughs> and he's saying, as we end the fall semester, 
I want all of you to remember every single lesson, every single lecture. We, as lore holds, come to an agreement that actions matter. Our actions are everything. Am I boring some of you? No, no, no. Actions. 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 We're all part of a web. One giant web. And we weave new patterns every day. New patterns. Together, alone. We weave and we weave through. Trust in your fellow comrades. If there's anything I want you to take away from this semester, trust in your fellow comrades. Weave patterns together. Talk to one another. Trust one another, because actions can change the world. Don't believe me? And he just poof, sets down the big old history textbook that you've been studying all semester. Proves right there. Warrior Princess Gunhilda rallying her troops. One, one speech made all the difference. Doubled her numbers overnight. Would not have happened without that one speech. The monk, Dwarf, Henrik, he was told by the church not to feed the starving peasants, and he did anyway, and then grew to lead said church. Actions are everything. And by working together, we can accomplish so much. And then the bell rings. Have a wonderful winter break, everyone. I want those assignments. First thing in the morning when we come back, don't think I'm going to cut you a slack. But most of all, have fun. And you are all dismissed. How's Miss Day feeling? Bored. <laughs> <laughs> she was doodling leaves. Mm. Were they sad leaves? No. If she had a red pen, they'd be colored red. And so we fade away from that class and fade into the day of the festival where two of you have dates. Supposedly, there are at least three dates. <laughs> as uh, far as Cataras is aware, yeah, mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. are three dates. Was the mistake able to get him to ask Rosie? Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 100%. Gary, wh where are you and how are you feeling the day of the festival? I mean, so Gary was cooking for the eating contest, right? Yes, yes, he was. So, so quite busy, probably. Probably, like, at least in all of the time leading up to this, He's been basically cooking as quickly as he can because he's just like doesn't want to show up in clothes that smell like bacon. Of course. It's probably a case of like the shift ends right before the date's supposed to start. So he's trying to like get out half an hour early mm -hmm. to go change or shower. And Koss, mm. how are you feeling about today? A little bit nervous, but overall pretty good. I feel like uh, Koss is optimistic about how things will go. Um, they have thus far only Kamira's words about Dario's questionableness. And they don't put a whole lot of stock in that, given that Kamira's kind of a bitch to people. Yeah, <laughs> well, strong words, but I, sure. I mean, they wouldn't put it that way. <laughs> not Cos might not, but I sure will. Uh, she trapped someone in a mirror. Would Cos be like humming the song that Dario sang as like, mm, yeah, 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 in the yeah, mirror? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I don't remember the song, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's called Innocence by Avril Lavigne. <laughs> Your uncultured people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we fade in on a crowd of people all heading towards Strixhaven Stadium where Captain Dapperwing is set to give her speech right at noon, thus kicking off the festivities that will last three whole days. <laughs> the general layout, just to give you guys an idea, the festivities start in the Strixhaven Stadium, right? That is also where the press is and where all the shops are. Now, the press has been instructed to stay here. And if you are here, you are thus basically saying it's okay for the press to take pictures of you and be observe. Anywhere else, the press is not allowed to go and, and be a hindrance. You're allowed to roam freely and have a great time. So Thank if you. we go to the stadium, we need to make sure we're dressed to impress. That. <laughs> no. Oh, I just got it. <laughs> We have the ride section, of course, the game section, the food stalls, and then the very center, there is a quiet area should people need a break from the crowds and the noise. When I say it's a quiet area, I do mean that it is enshrouded in a silence spell. Mm. 
uh, so anybody who goes there cannot hear all of the noise around. And furthermore, there are relaxing activities there, such as cats can, and dogs. Can you and, hear inside of the area? Can you have a conversation there? Or yes. Is it just, okay, cool. Yes. Yeah. I think that um, no noise can pass through the gate. This gotcha. Mistake, you wanted to have a conversation yeah. with Griff, didn't you? So Mistake's goal is to find Griff, wherever he is. But Griff has his, it's a sweatsuit tracksuit, but the, so it's got a hood, sunglasses, hands in the front pocket of the hoodie, trying to not be seen. But he is out and about. And there's only so many people who are above six feet. <laughs> I honestly feel like there are quite a few there's people who are above yeah. six feet. Also, you know, there are other Leonin and Tortles and other very tall races. Mm -hmm. So it's probably not that unusual, but... And this is a podcast. So yeah, you fucking, you pine grip. <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't, I, I'm not going to be avoidant of a mistake, yeah. more so like really avoidant of the press. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. So is a mistake, so th that's fine. So she yeah. finds him wherever the hell he is. <laughs> he's eating a hot dog somewhere. By the food stands. No, oh, he's, he's eating funnel cake. Mistake goes and just like sits next to him, assuming he's sitting on a bench somewhere. Morning. Morning. How's the funnel? My hands over a little <laughs> to your face area. <laughs> a small piece since it's being offered. Ah, thought we could chat for a minute. Sure. Is that a morning beer? <laughs> no, no, he's not going to be an alcoholic. <laughs> he's Is it apple cider? Because that's a very autumn festival. Thing. Yeah. All right. I want you guys to drop as many festival. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah, it's yeah. it's it's, it's, a, it's a mold apple cider. Ooh, so, that yeah. sounds so good. I, I like, uh, kind of like it when it's really cold outside and you have a warm beverage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's perpetually warm here. <sighs> it's, it's, it's the aesthetic mistake. No, I, I can appreciate it. I'm just also grumpy that it's perpetually warm here. Anyway, um, but I wanted to ask one thing that I wanted to ask. Is it part of that little fight slot that you don't remember by chance? What do you mean? We fought it and we won't beat it. Right, right. Do you remember me telling you a really bad joke during that? I mean, you... you tell... jokes frequently. <laughs> ah. Okay, so, uh... Method three. Uh... You walked over to one of them and put your hand out, right? Yeah. Big boom magic, that's what I do. Do you remember what happened after that? One. <laughs> Whatever you did, it knocked you on your ass. Huh. And I mean, I had grass stains. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, it just knocked you flat on the ground, and your arm was glowing purple. Oh. And when I checked up on you, uh -huh. you snapped awake, and your eyes were glowing purple. Right. And, do you remember what happened next? I'll be honest, I don't remember all, all of the fights that we have, so I mean, this is just kind of part and, part and parcel for my... Okay, because you then tackled me to the ground. What? Yeah, I think, you know, Dean Valentin said that thing, and she kind of taps her head, is dormant. I suspect uh, whatever you did or tried to do woke it up briefly because then the slard stopped trying to hurt you and were like weirdly sympathetic toward you and like gave you comforting pats, it was weird. <clears throat> then then you, you tried to, well, attack me but I was the only one near you at the time. He's anxiously picking at the, the, the rim of the beverage cup. Like, looks like the side of, of like a chair that a cat scratches a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Healing at it with a claw, kind of. Ah. So that was, that was a thing that happened. And that's why some people were a little cagey after. Uh, uh, right. I just, I wanted to make sure you were aware of all of that. So, uh, my proposal, I guess, here is after winter, 
we can figure that out. Maybe work with Gary to figure out what causes it to, to do things, see if we can get it to stop doing that, or help you take control from it quicker, or... That, uh, yeah, that, that would that would be a good idea. I'm sorry. Yeah. A mistake. <laughs> it's okay. It didn't hurt or anything. It was sort of just like a really big hug. <laughs> so I didn't attack you. Well, I mean, no, you tackled me to the ground. It was definitely trying to attack me, but then I told you a really bad joke. But it felt like I'm... I... I'm strong. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> I got you, I got you, yeah. As you're saying, <laughs> I'm strong... I don't want to hurt you. As you're saying, I'm strong, you see a shirtless rampart carrying... <laughs> Carrying what is very clearly the, you know, the, the hammer, yeah, the yeah. test your strength pull. And <laughs> it's clearly like 30 feet tall, but it's folded up and he's carrying it all. Hey, burning hammer, hey, mistake. Behind him, Ricard is shirtless and carrying the mallet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anyway, point is, Griff, you're our friend and we all trust you. It's just that thing in your head we don't trust. So, whatever's going on, whatever it is, we're with you through it. However you need us to... Wait a second. I gotcha. Oh. Next. So I'm thinking we, we renovate some of IF Squad HQ. We can yeah. put a little sign on the wall in a chair for the stupid corner. <laughs> I've always wanted. Yeah, I'm feeling like I should sit in it right now. Uh, well, no. It, it's to give out, not to, not for us to sit in. Students, an announcement. <laughs> Captain Dapplewing shall be walking up to the stage in ten minutes for her speech. Thank, Thank you, Dan. Carry on. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. I'm guard. <laughs> uh, so that's supposed to be at the stadium, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I really don't want to be in the stadium. What do you think? There are better places, but is this the only place we can get funnel cake? Probably around here, yeah. There are shops in the stadium, it's just there are also a lot of, you know, reportery people with yeah. quills and beady eyes and... We could get costumes. <laughs> Disguise, disguises. I, you know, that does sound kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, I jump in. Yeah? Well, hey there! I heard you two were in the market for some disguises. What? Well, come on over to Beppo's disguise stand. <laughs> I'm bear. sorry. Are those are those supposed to be dog ears, cat ears, or bear ears? I it's whatever in your heart, Miffy. Wait, if if, if whatever's in mistakes or what about my heart? Your heart also matters. You can be anybody you want at the fall festival. You did you did you hear any? It was sort of hard not to hear. Did you hear the approach? Yeah. I'm a very sneaky Goliath. <laughs> So meanwhile, at the stadium, you two, have you told each other that you have dates today? I think, yeah, Kamas would probably be talking about, like, wanting to find some time to hang out with the F-Squad, but they have another thing, a date, essentially. And I think Gary probably would just be complaining about the fact that this is a double date that is mm. not with Kataras. Well, why are, why are you doing this, then? If, you, if this makes you uncomfortable, then you should... So, to be honest, I didn't ask anybody to be Kataras's date. Because I was too afraid that whoever I did ask, he would end up liking. Because his only qualification is vibes. Oh, oh no, Gary, no. Gary, yep. um, this is a really bad situation that you've dug yourself into again. <laughs> what do you mean again? I'm just, the last time that you were involved in anything romantic on campus. That I know went that one great! Was, it, Actually, no, yes, that's true. I'm thinking about the time right before then. With Rampart. Oh. Okay, well, in my defense, I was uh, never trying to flirt with Rampart. Okay, but you are trying to flirt with Kataras right now. So, kind of, by your own admission, this is kind of worse, right? Maybe. Okay, just, I... Listen, I can try to help if you want. I can, let's see, I can try to, like, triple date it. No, um... 
you know, with Kanaras's luck, he seems to get stood up constantly, so maybe that will rub onto me and I'll get stood up. And, you know, then we don't have to worry about it. That's not a way, but not a really positive outlook. Gary! Uh, Gary! <laughs> Hey, Gary! Cataris is like jumping so you can see him, but he's so tall he doesn't have to, which is the funny part. <laughs> he's like approaching, he's like 30 feet away. Is he he's... taller than Gary? Yeah, he's two inches tall. Oh, he's 6'4". Six he's 6'4". Six four. Four. Okay. But he's lanky. He's not like a, like a bird. Gary is also Bean lanky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Gary. So, Mistake and I had a talk. Good girl, that one. Found you a date? Looking forward to it, mate. You deserve happiness. Hey, yeah. we've met. Wait, Mistake was involved in this? Apparently. <laughs> This is news to me, too. Koss is just gonna, like, side-eye Gary for a second and then say, Okay, just take care of yourself and uh, the other people involved, please, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> <laughs> be, be prudent. And, uh, I feel very inspired. <laughs> you guys just hear a heavy breathing nearby as Captain Dappling is making her way to the stage. She refuses to use the wheelchair and she's using her two crutches as the, the Earl is helping her onto the stage. Do we see Griffin Mistake in the audience? No, that's one of disguises. Of course. Uh, Excuse you. What do we see in the audience? I think Mistake has gone like pirate <laughs> with like, you know, the tricorn hat and a big giant feather out of it, mustache and an eye patch. The hat has little holes cut into it or like something to make room for her horns. Mm -hmm. Griffin want to have his face obscured. Can there be some type of astral sea astronaut Oh, like a di diving helmet kind of thing? Um, space travel is oh. a bit much here. I, I don't think we've gotten there as a society here. Okay. But No, you know what? It's an old-timey scuba diver yeah. with the fucking mask thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In and this case, it's just cutting-edge technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, <laughs> but it's also, I, f I like for the, for the idea of it to be kind of dingy. Like, mistakes constantly, you're fine. It's just it's like, anything you want to be in script, just, it's also kind of wet. <laughs> <laughs> it's being used. As people are gathering, I would also just like to say that Mistake and Griff don't look that out of place. <laughs> There's a lot of people that are dressed pretty wacky to this event. Not just very uh, creative clothing accessories and makeup, but like costumes. Some of them like traditional, like their ancestors might have worn this. Others just for fun and extravagant. So yeah, it's very lively, but the official festivities have yet to begin because they are all waiting for the opening speech. As Dapplewing uh, makes it to the front of the stage, she does not look well. And having so many students and faculty and reporters present is making it way worse. She's sweating, the Earl is like fanning her, she's pale, she's got bags under her eyes, and she tries. So, greetings! The stadium kind of slowly begins to quiet down because she, her voice is not nearly as commanding as it was last year. Gre greetings, students, faculty, alumni, uh, esteemed friends and colleagues. And you see like reporters like jotting down notes quickly, looking her up and down, some of them whispering into each other. And it just makes Dappling feel worse and worse. It's like, I, f I feel grateful, grateful. I feel, I feel warm. And she just drops to her knees. The Earl like manages to catch her as a couple of faculty like rush in, including the vice captain, Bjorn. Rushes in, you know, helps her up. And you just hear her cough. <coughs> She comes back with a bloody handkerchief. And they're just like, no, 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 just you go sit, you go sit. And Bjorn instead takes the stage. Ah, apologies, everyone. Our captain has seen better days. Um, no fear. I am here to welcome you all. Students, faculty, alumni, and esteemed friends and colleagues. I am honored to welcome you all to the Strixhaven Fall Festival in celebration of the 48th Triennial Mage Tower Championship. He, uh, one of his Clockwork Sentinels brings over the big old scissors. 
as he walks over to the gates. Every three years, our school holds this grand festival in the spring. The championship will be in full swing and our students will square off for the Strixhaven Cup. Every 30 minutes, I plead you all to listen for the fireworks and look up at the sky. For every 30 minutes, a new team will be announced, their portraits displayed up in the skies for all eyes to see. Gary yeah. just wants to make a comment to whoever is closest to him, just being like, seems really weird to set off fireworks when it's still light outside. <laughs> Doesn't really have quite the same effect. The winter break is right around the corner, and we shall commence our festivities before we send our students home for the winter. And then he says, some of them anyway. Cool. You fucking piece of shit. <laughs> Griff casts chromatic orb at his dad. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, enjoy your time here. Enjoy the food, the games, the rides, but most importantly, enjoy the camaraderie. For come spring, we're all competing. <laughs> Go and have fun. And then he just cuts the ribbon as fireworks shoot into the sky. say right about now Dario shows up and how he shows up is he has not learned his lesson or rather maybe he has but he likes to live on the wild side hands over the eyes guess who class charges up magic yeah. <laughs> which one it's thunder wave oh it's boy they're just charging it up and uh class is gonna say rather be who I think it is I dare you do it you know you're lucky we're in a crowd <laughs> <laughs> and he removes the hand I want to say he comes around and kisses class on the cheek like from behind. Are you ready? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Did you have plans? I... Wherever our hearts take us. Oh, hey, you're the you're the cook. Yeah, this is um, this is Gary. Gary, this is Dario. Um, Gary's another member of the F Squad. It's a pleasure. Ah, Any ah. friend of Koss is a friend of mine. He's a strong grip. Um, and you, a weak one. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. No. <laughs> nice to meet you. Black silver blue. You know how it goes. Uh huh. So, shall we? Yeah, um, let's go. Sorry to steal your friend away from you, but... Gary, good luck. Thanks. You too. He kind of just gives Dario like a side eye, like this was a weird first impression and I don't think I like it. <laughs> and Kaz and Dario walk away, which we'll get right back to, leaving Gary and Kateriz alone. So, should be here any minute now. Running late at this point. What about you? Um, let's, I'll, I'll, let's wait for, for your person to, to show up. Yeah, all right. You know, this means a lot to me. And I was hoping she wouldn't be late. And I just, I just, and right around then you hear, Oi, over here. Yeah. Rosie runs up to the both of you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she runs up to the both of you. <sighs> she does not look in shape for a date. She's got paint all over her. She very clearly is part of some kind of committee that is doing something for the festival, but she shows up regardless. It's like, wait, let's go to the chase, yeah? It's like, oh yeah, what's up? Gonna... I'm talking. <laughs> you. <laughs> Me? You. Me. Yes, you. Got it, great. Yes. You know who you're standing next to? Uh, Kataros? You're standing next to my best friend, or one of them, okay? I fucking love this guy since the first day I met him, and I will not stand here and be a part of some scheme, hmm? Not when my best friend is on the line. And you, you, you beautiful, oblivious asshole, you. I love you so much, but oh my God, have you not paying attention? Last year, Aurora dumped Gary's ass because Gary wouldn't stop pampering her and cooking her food. That is Gary's love language. He literally cooked you your favorite fucking snack. What the hell do you think he was trying to say? What are you laughing at? That's not funny. <laughs> this is Nikki laughing. Gary's not laughing. <laughs> Gary is, is trying his hardest to pretend he is not there. So if I were the both of you, I'd stop cutting the shit and get down to it already. Thank you very much. Love you both. Bye bye. I think the phrase is I would cut the shit, not stop cutting the shit. 
Rosie just kind of flips you off over her shoulder. <laughs> and just runs off. But then also, can't help it, turns around and blows you a kiss. And oh. runs away. Fierce. <laughs> and Cataris is just left there. What? So now might be a good time to tell you that I didn't actually find anybody to set up with you. Gary, you... You, you made... Oh, Gary. If you wanted to do this together, why didn't you just say so? And he... He holds out a hand. I mean, it kind of seems like when you tell someone you want to set them up with somebody else, it's a pretty clear, not interested signal. Because I didn't think I was worthy? What kind of bullshit is that? <laughs> he looks at his empty hand. <laughs> no, 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 Gary will take his hand. Yes. What do you want to do first? Each other. <laughs> no, we're gonna fade away from that. <laughs> well, I know. I want to finish with the. Okay. What's the cheapest? <laughs> That's what Gary wants to do. Is what costs the least money. Meanwhile, Mistake leans over to Griff and just says, "Hey, mm. between the two of us, who do you think can win the bigger plushie at the games?" I mean, that's like pretty much a foregone conclusion, but I. You can try, I, I suppose. He's All not right. even making eye contact. He's like, you know, looking up ahead at whatever it is they're looking at. Mm -hmm. All right. Deal. Did we, I'm sorry, did we bet something? Which one of us can win the bigger plushie? But, it, okay, so if, if I win, I just get the plushie, and then if you win, you get the plushie, and then it's just about the plushie. What would you like to wager then, Griff? <sighs> Prizes! Trinkets! Get your magical trinkets here, or win them. Fuck it, the plushy it is. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and as we all head into the festival proper, you get a waft of cotton candy, funnel cake, corn dogs, any and all of the festival foods there are. You see color everywhere. Stilt walkers, jugglers, fire breathers, ballerinas, there's like, Whoa. yeah, there's a lot of like acts all over the place. For the rest of the session, I will open up the floor to anything you would like to explore. There is a little something everywhere. So I'm gonna say Cost is actually playing along to a song that's uh, kind of just like in the air anyways. Okay. Like other people are playing along with. Come lads and lasses and all in between To the grandest of festivals you've ever seen There's music and dancing and food everywhere Maybe someone gets lucky if fortune be fair Dario started like humming along mm -hmm. like <laughs> And he asks, so a lot of the silver quills are hanging out at the poetry contest area if you wanted to go there, but I don't know, I'm more of a rights guy. It's up to you though. I do want to hang out with some of the other silver quills. Yeah, let's, let's go ch check out that spot. That's always amusing to watch them battle it out. Oh, is this a battle thing? Well, for the most part. <laughs> is this like, is this like um, a rap battle or like a diss battle? Or is this like one of those affirmation <laughs> circles that the, well, the white silver quills do? If it's anything like the stories say, I believe they draw names at random from a hat. Names that you yourself have to volunteer. And then they draw from a second hat for the style of battle. Hmm. So you, even you don't know. That sounds fun. Okay, let's go do that. Fun. That's daunting to me, but you know, all right. I didn't say it was, it was fun to, to take part in, but you know, it might be fun to watch. All right. And you head over to the contest section. Gary and Cataris, where are you heading? So I know Gary said go for what's cheapest, but I think it also makes more sense that they would go for rides. Mm -hmm. Just because Gary assumes he will not be any good at any of the games. <laughs> <laughs> Mistaken Griff, who I, who I assume the gruesome twosome is going to games because of the contest. Mm -hmm. Mistake wants to try everything. Yeah. She's got to prove herself to Griff. I wonder if Griff will have a low frustration tolerance since you know. <laughs> All right, so Koss and Dario, you head over to the contest area. Much like Dario said, 
there are a lot of Silver Pro students here, mostly around huddled around the stage. They're drinking and having a good time as uh, up at the front, there are two students battling it out. And for them, it was a musical contest, which was drawn at random. So one student is very good with a lute and the other student just picked up a hand drum and is trying to keep <laughs> up while they're trying to verbally spar, uh -huh. but it's not going well. What? Oh. There's a clear winner here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just like the idea of the guy, I think you are dumb. <laughs> and you smell bad, dumb face. <laughs> and he uh, refers back to OJ, blueberry marmalade, blueberry mm. marmalade, OJ, jam. <laughs> and Dario's like, I'll oh, get us some drinks. What do you want? Um, what do they have? Uh, Any any adventurous? Ale, underdark, mushroom wine. I'll do more of that. Okay. <laughs> and he walks off to the bar. There are several vendors here too. The vendors are everywhere. It just so happens that like the vendors at the at the stadium are more business. Like it's more like a job fair. Whereas the vendors out here, it's just vendors and merch and fun stuff. As Dario walks away to get Koss a drink and himself a drink, Koss, you know, you're, you're standing there, you're admiring the view of Dario. <laughs> and you hear behind you, way to ruin the view, you hear behind you. Well, 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 I must have some shit in my eyes. <laughs> I'll turn around and see who it is. You see a familiar face from last year. I know that <laughs> a Silver Quill alumnus with an inkling around his shoulder that also looks very familiar because it didn't belong to him, it belonged to Gary. Oh, I Belonged is a, uh, a very relative <laughs> yeah, term. Yeah. Was given to initially, maybe. Oh, um, hello, Fame. I didn't realize you were on campus. <laughs> you didn't think you could get rid of me so easily, right? Honey, sweetie baby, I'm still a Strixhaven alumnus. Oh, yeah, Nobody can take that away from me. I know. Um, I just didn't realize that you'd uh, have come back after, you know, being fired. And... Oh, fired is a strong word. I would... Decided to resign. Don't believe me? Look it up. The paperwork is there to prove it. And not, not a damn thing. That you yeah, I wasn't prove. there, so um, I just I just know what Griff told me. <laughs> and what was in the newspaper? Griff. Yes. How is our little Leon and buddy doing these days? Oh, he's doing all right. Hmm. Yeah. Just all right. You know, school work and all. Um. Well. <laughs> Good to see you, Fane. Oh, I'm glad to is... see that you're um, still hanging around the campus and stuff. That is so good to see you, Silver Trove. Look at those colors. Mm. Mm. Thank you, I think. What's wrong? Oh, it's just... Honey, did I do something? You... No, not really. <laughs> good. Yeah, because we're in good terms, you and I. Right? Sure, yeah. Right? We should. Silver Quill stick together. Yeah, as long as you're over the thing with the paint that you were coming after me last year for? Oh, baby, I'm so over it. I mean, I am just... I'm a new man, Koss. I have started a new business. You know, I like to see my separation from Strixhaven as an opportunity for me to spread my wings and thrive. Really get out there. Show the world what fame is made out of. Okay. Well, I'm glad to see hear that you've uh, found a way to land on your feet, then. Thanks. No, I'm doing swell. I'm single now. Eligible bachelor. Wasn't relevant to me, but okay. <laughs> Did you, wait, sorry, hold on. Now? I'm hearing, what I'm hearing here is that- No, oh, look, it, I'm, don't, way to pry into my personal life. There, I, don't, I don't mean to, it's just, no. you know, you, you mentioned it. Anyway, uh, hey, you want to buy something from my booth? What, what are you selling? Uh, <laughs> what am I not selling? I'll even give you a discount if you need more paint. I don't think I do, but I appreciate it nonetheless. What do you mean? I think I'm... I figured out how to do it on my own. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. You come see me, baby, if you need anything else, okay? Okay, sounds good. The fuck did you do it on your own? <laughs> Must be a different college. <laughs> well, um, that was an interesting <laughs> conversation. <laughs> And we cut to Gary and Cataris. You guys are going to ride! Going to ride! Okay. Now, when you enter, you see a carousel 
upon which the students that are seated, you know, they buckle in and all that. And then when they start the carousel, you watch the thing turn. And as it turns, the horses spring to life and become clockwork pegasi that just begin like taking some of those students out for a ride around this section. You see the lover's wheel. It is a Ferris wheel but there's nobody named Ferris in this universe. So it is the lover's wheel mm -hmm. It has a big old heart at the center and it's moving very slowly. You get a beautiful view up top. There's also the bubble pop teapot. It is exactly as, well, you weren't there, but it's exactly as King explained it. You see people lighting up. There's a stairway on the inside, walking out of the spout, spout. encased in a bubble. You see a coaster, you see all kinds of rides. What would you like to do? I think he, he'll ask Kataras to be like, do you have a, Preference, I think the, the roller coaster might give me motion sickness, but... Oh, oh, we don't have to do anything too fast paced. You want to do one of the slow ones? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Great. He looks from the, the teapot to the wheel. Have your pick. <laughs> All right, Gary will be bold. He's going to choose the one with the giant ass heart on <gasps> it. <laughs> yeah. Hey! You go on the lover's wheel. And Gary pays for them both, which does hurt his soul just a little bit. Because <laughs> that's like a whole goal. It is. And as you guys are heading towards the lover's wheel, the first team pops up. The fireworks go off, and you see them turn into portraits of people up in the sky. And the first team that is announced is the Mathletes. <laughs> sponsored by Dean Zimone. And of course, the sponsor is just the name, not the portrait, is right underneath the team. Also, their team colors are displayed. For this one, it will just be the Quandrix colors, but it's got uh, splashes of white in it too, so it's green, blue, and white. <laughs> and then finally, mistaken grip. You go to games. Yeah. All right, which game are you trying out? Uh, archery contest. Archery! <laughs> 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 Damn it. All right, fine. <laughs> I pick the next one. When you go to the archery contest, there's a Luxodon there. It's like, step right up, step right up, two silver, two silver. Oh, hey. <laughs> what can I do for the happy couple? <laughs> Four silver. Rick doesn't say anything. This laughter is in character. <laughs> Two silver. All right, he brings over a rack. Pick your weapon. Grabs one. What does it look like? Um, yeah, every time Tyler goes mini golfing, he never finds the right size golf club. So mm. he's, Griff is never gonna find the right size bow. It looks like a safe bow, a nice bow to give a young person for their first bow. It is, it is not glamorous, and it does look like Griff is a little too big for it. <laughs> Mistake will hand over the two silver, look at the rack, and just be like, can I just use my own? No, gotta use theirs. <laughs> oh, I don't make the rules. I'm not, your boyfriend's a bit weird. Uh, <laughs> I have nothing against it, use your own, I don't care. Great. You see the targets at the far end. It's like, you ready? Yeah. All right, three, two, one, go! The reason why he counted down, not because it's time, but when he flips the lever, all of the targets begin moving all throughout the wall, almost like bumper cars. Like they bump into each other, they keep on ricocheting. It's kind of like pool. It's angles, and they're all going. We see Mistake and Griff standing there next to each other, each of them holding a bow. Oh, <laughs> no! All right, a 15. 19 plus. Oh, nice. My proficiency is 19. Yeah. Yeah. But because you're not an archer in, no. in game. No. No, wait a second. Wait a second. Because you're not an archer in game, I have to at least honor that canonically, your arrow hits one of the outer rings. Whereas Mistake's arrow, fucking like. <laughs> it goes right between two of them. And you have two arrows left. All right. 17 plus six. Oh! Nine plus seven. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Griff is feeling really good, but he's not gonna let it show. He, he's got the helmet on. So I feel really bad, but yeah. once again, Griff is getting better. The arrow hits a different target and it's closer and mistakes arrow. But if you're wearing a pirate's hat, maybe the feather. And uh, that's out. she. I, she's also wearing an eye pad. Yeah. So oh. she doesn't have depth perception right <laughs> now. <laughs> so she, like she's fucking up. So like she's right, like flip super, up the eye patch. She's super in her head and she's wearing an eye patch. She doesn't have depth perception. She doesn't realize she doesn't have depth perception. So she's also kind of confused <laughs> about what's going on. All right, last arrow. 15 plus 6. 13 plus 7. Okay. So, so all right. Violet, 
she figures out the problem, flips up the eye patch so she can actually see with both eyes, so she finally actually hits something. Crypto's well in games, not in battle. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say you both hit the same target for the third arrow. <laughs> Boom! They're like equidistant from each other. Yeah. Alright, thank you very much. Thanks for playing. And hands Griff a big ol' unicorn plushie. Hands mistake. A tiny little, uh... A squirrel. It's a squirrel plushie. <laughs> it's a taxidermy squirrel. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. no. Poorly done. They're both plushies. Oh. Like, there you go. You can exchange three small plushies for one big one, or three big plushies for one magical item. Next! Did he say magical item? He did say magical item. Do you think it's more useful than the little flag? Hey! Are the magical items any more useful than these, like, these pendants? And Griff whips out the pendant and <laughs> holding the unicorn. Uh, it's in the eye of the beholder. That. I don't know. Next! I... <laughs> Wait, I... Mistake now thinks this is a clue. And she's gonna start looking around for a beholder. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we get back to cause, I realize we spent very little time on Gary. We did. So, Gary... I thought you just didn't want to flirt with me. You know, I flirt with you all the time. So. That is like, fair. Like, in game, not even just in real life. Also in real life. <laughs> You go to the you go to the lover's wheel. You're about to uh, enter your little cart. Cadarus feels awkward. He doesn't know what to say. This all just <laughs> he was not expecting this. So you know he's just kind of just been. I think the fact that Cadarus is awkward just makes Gary more awkward oh than gosh. he already was. Roll for awkward. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so what are you what are you doing for the for the break? Uh, I, I guess I'm going to Ravnica. Oh, cool. Never been. No? No, going back home. Grovel Vale Jewel. Oh, that's, uh, I don't know how this hasn't come up before, but that's where you're from. Hmm. Um, I, I hear it's getting cut down where it was, but maybe not so much now. Yeah, whole family hated dabbling for a bit, but, uh, seems like she's turning it around. This whole railroad thing is really putting a damper on a whole lot of other resources. But I didn't come here to talk politics, Gary. Like, what are you doing for fun? I mean, I'm gonna go on the greatest hike of my life. I'm gonna be out there hiking for two weeks. I'm well, gonna that take sounds really cool. so much rations with me. I'm just gonna camp out and just live, you know? I've got nine siblings, so it's uh, very busy and loud at home. So it's very, very hard to find a moment of silence. Ah. Uh... Well, there's Althea and Beryl, Jeleneth, uh, Amakir, Holimian, Lyodon, Sianadel, and uh, Nilo. What about you? You know, this doesn't tend to come up, but I can actually uh, relate to that. Oh? Uh, I don't really visit my parents much. Um, they also have a lot of children. <laughs> oh shit! How many? Uh, Gwendolyn, Grace, Genevieve, Gina, Gabriella, Gloria, and Giselle. <laughs> That's fun. Bit of a theme there. Yeah, uh... Which one's your favorite? Is that a weird thing to ask? Well, I don't really talk to any of my sisters. Can't really have a favorite. Oh. Well... I see them maybe like twice a year, if that. Probably closer to once, I don't know. Well, when you have a family that big, it's probably for the best. Moment of peace and all that. Sure. <laughs> Nothing to do with, you know, not being able to fit that many people in a house. As you make it to the front of the line, you saw them handing two roses to each couple, so then it's your turn. It's a gnome lady, he's like, here you go, honey. This Gary kind of takes his rose and then, like, looks at it and, like, looks at Kataras. <laughs> he holds out his hand for your rose. So Gary gives him his rose. Puts them together and then makes them blossom into a big old bouquet. Aww. And then hands it back to Gary. Oh. <laughs> that was really impressive. Thanks. I could do it with produce, too. Yep. That sounds extremely useful, for particularly for your hiking trip. Yeah. Anyway, after you. <laughs> right, yep, okay. And then you go into the carriage. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the, at the poetry contest, Dario has walked back, hands you your mushroom wine, and he has something different. He has an ale. <sighs> hey, um, did you happen to know Thane the Broker in the last couple of years? Yeah? Why? Just, you know, curious, because he's... I just saw him around, um, and I realized he was back on campus, or even allowed on campus. Oh. He's here. Yeah. Mm. Is there something wrong? Oh, just 
He used to be my boss. <clears throat> we didn't end on good terms. You didn't really. You don't really strike me as a janitorial type. <laughs> um, Cost. There's a few things you don't know about me. The most important being, I do what I must to get by. Well, you know we've got the entire night if you want to share. <laughs> All right. Why not? You ever been a noble? No. I don't recommend it. I mean, I was just a kid, but we lost our nobility down there. Made it to the surface. Had to do a lot of things to get by. Some of them not very legal. Don't worry. I wouldn't hurt anybody. Unless they deserved it. He winks. No, no, I, I sold things. I sold things for fame. I mean, I, yeah, that's... I can't really fault somebody for doing what they need to do to get by. It's... Thanks. Have I told you about my family before? No, no, I tried to ask. You were a little... Uh, just a little bit secretive. Yeah, I mean, we're changelings, so... Outside of certain pockets of the world, we're not really... Allowed in polite society, so, you know, we... Pretend to be other people to fit in. Yeah. If other people found out about that, they wouldn't like it either. But, you know, we do what we have to do to get by, I guess. Can I be honest? What? I'm so jealous. Of me being a changeling? The things I could get away with. <laughs> sorry, insensitive? N I mean, yeah, a little bit. But all right, sorry, sorry. sorry. But I understand, it, it is helpful, but you can get yourself into more trouble than you could otherwise. If you get close to somebody and then they find out that you're somebody else, then you hurt them in a much more deep way than you could otherwise. What does Koss look like right now? Uh, let's see. Koss has been, I think, swapping uh, throughout the night. They are currently landing on um, a fall-themed Eladrin. Okay. Oh, by the way, can I show you something? Oh, wait. So, Cost like, kind of like, takes a step back, and they're dressed as they usually are, which is like lots of really baggy clothing mm -hmm. all the time, so that they have room to shift to their appearance. But uh, in this case, they are wearing some special clothing, and they do a little twirl, and the clothing begins to shift on them into something that's a lot more form-fitting, which is not something that they ever wear otherwise. Whoa! Almost getting sexy. Showing off the curves, calls. Okay. And they'll just be like, I thought I might dress up a bit since I got a new outfit. <sighs> Shit. And now you've outdone me. We tell you what, give me 10 minutes and I can fix that. Why don't you stay here? I like your leather jacket. All right. As you're talking, up onto the poetry contest stage, another drow walks up. Your roommate walks up there. And you realize why she was probably uh, not around for the last few days. She's part of this. She, uh, she's like, all right, listen up, you bastard. <laughs> and they're all just like laughing. <laughs> it's time for the next contest. Let's see. Up next, we got... And as she was about to pull from the hat, she looks in your direction and sees her brother, who she warned you to stay away from. And are you wearing the pointy hat? I assume yep. you were wearing the pointy yeah. hat. So she knows exactly who you are. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> oh, just thinking about all the things I'm going to do during winter breaks. I'm like, you sore losers. <laughs> and as I was saying, the next battle will be... And she pulls from the hat. Cost silver trove. What? I didn't. I didn't. I. I didn't. I. I, I didn't put you in either. Oh, I'm sorry. What? You're packing off already, are ya? I, no, I didn't say that. Um. Guys, look at that. We have a quitter. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Sure. What? What's the contest? Well. We'll see, I guess. But first, don't get ahead of yourself, Koss. Sorry, my, forgive my roommate. <laughs> They're a riot. Your opponent pulls, this time actually draws at random from the hat. Oh my. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have our very first student versus alumnus 
battle of the day. Remember, students, faculty, and alumni can compete in this contest. And that would be Cost Silver Trove facing off against none other than Mr. Fane, the broker. And there's a round of applause as uh, Fane kind of just was not expecting this, just like, <laughs> I got this, I got this, sure. <laughs> just kill we... Well, shit. Yeah, um, I guess. You didn't tell me you signed up. I didn't, but I guess, um, good luck. <laughs> I don't need luck, Koss. It's me, I'm Fane, the broker. <laughs> not because I break shit, but today, today. I'm in the mood to break some spirits, Koss. Okay, I'll save your material for the stage, then. Fine. I will. <clears throat> Pulls out some flashcards that he very <laughs> obviously brought with him. <laughs> Meanwhile, what are Mistake and Griff up to now? All What's right. the next one? New plan. Griff is holding the big unicorn. The unicorn. Okay, so we have this contest, but also yeah. we get magical items for everyone in the escort. Including Shelly. Uh, us first. Yeah, sure. Pick, okay. the, pick the next game. Uh, axe throwing. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, what's up? It's uh, this big beefy lady wearing like furs on a hot day like today. And it smells like it. <laughs> She's got two axes. She's really dressing for the park here. She looks like a Viking. All right, two silver. All right, there you go. Thank you. Ooh, this ought to be interesting. This is going to be another arranged attack. The obstacle though, when she pulls the lever, is like gusts of wind to mess up your throw and you have to throw oh it Oh god, up. what if you brain yourself when the axe comes back at you, right? <laughs> Do I get proficiency is the question. Yeah. It doesn't matter, that was a break. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. That's 20. Whoa! You're really building up his confidence. Griff is no. killing it. Yeah. Okay. This is the greatest day. <laughs> Your axe just fights through the forces of nature as boom, it hits the target. And that 20 fucking goes through it, splices through the Both wood. Sides. Whereas Mistake's that axe just it. kind of flies with the wind. And She doesn't even chuck it hard enough. It gets like maybe halfway there before yeah. it just hits the ground. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Griff goes over and then just picks up that axe and, and gives it to the... Buffeted by wind, yeah, says. right. His mane is <laughs> magically <laughs> whipping in the background. <laughs> All right, you get two more. <gasps> oh my God! Stop. Nine. Plus nine. Six. I, I haven't rolled higher than a nine, <laughs> and I have rolled eight times. Because you both rolled a nine, I want to say it's kind of cool to have like when you both throw at the same time, the wind knocks both of them together, and it just does this ping. Yeah. Sound in the air as both axes ricochet and fall. They, they hit the opposite targets. <laughs> so it doesn't actually count as a point for either yes. of us. Yes, yes, I like that actually. And be more careful. <laughs> Last one. 16. That's a six. Oh my gosh. Plus seven. That still doesn't hit. They announce the new team. It's literally like right in your face. It's so bright and the, the bang of the fireworks and it's Fury and the Gales and you see Xanther's face, Nori's face, Javanish, a bunch of familiar faces that it's so distracting. Hey, come on, that was just really bad timing with with with, with, the, with the lights going off and the bang. Can we, can we, just, can we get a do-over? <sighs> you know, you're so cute. Yes, you can have a do-over. Give me two silver. <laughs> oh, how about a... Uh... It's something a little smaller than, than, a, than a silver. Mmm, mmm, okay. I'll take 20 copper. <sighs> You're funny. You got a lot of jokes. Okay, okay. I tried. Is that it? You got anything more to throw? Are we done? M mistake's going to be a little bit of an ass and go up to Super Smooth. I have a joke. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but. So? It's just, I sort of need to ask you a question and she's going to use Tasha's hands. <laughs> 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 While that's happening, can I do a sleight of hand and, oh and, oh my and, God. and, grab, oh gosh. and grab one of the big plushies? <laughs> oh <my laughs> so as Four the guys begin snorting, like <laughs> <laughs> as Griff was about to reach for the plushie, she just begins tapping. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you really need to get a handle on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're so funny. You know what? Here, have a free ride ticket on me. 
So, Gary and Kateris, how's the date going? Oh, it's not going so well, I don't think. No? It was going awkward. It was it going was a little awkward. my impression. Just a little bit. Okay, I don't think it's like going like bad, but like I'm assuming it's still going awkward. The thing is, doing the lover's wheel first? <laughs> damn, bold <laughs> choice. Very bold. On top of just surprising Kat, Gary just doesn't know how to date. It's Gary like, has no fucking clue. It's, it's fine. I got as far as if I cook things for people they like it yep yeah the scariest which, like you, only move would you have done your move today oh like did he make food did he bring for anything Kateris? yeah i want to say like he didn't because this wasn't officially a date with Kataras. okay but i think at some point he might actually suggest that they go to the eating contest oh no that's all right i like your cooking better oh Aww. i mean so i i did cook for the eating contest <gasps> but that's the only thing that i, I Cool. Gotta look in your eye. What? Do you want to go to the eating contest? Yes, please. Okay. He drooled right in front of you. Yeah, you head over to the eating contest. <laughs> Can that have happened at the very top of the very screen? So just like, <laughs> and then the drool drops down. <laughs> As you're heading to the eating contest, to the contest area, there's a lot of people in makeup I've mentioned, mm -hmm. right? But you see a troop of gnomes in clown makeup. Entertaining some of the crowds there. Uh, it says here, shooting themselves off a cannon. Use your imagination as to how they do that, but they are doing that. And as you and Kataraz are heading to the eating contest area, in fact, Kataraz is speed walking there. <laughs> He's like, yes, I'd like to sign up, please. Yeah, no, I, I don't even care about winning. I just, I, I, it looks great. You partaking or? Uh, I'm not going to win, but I could eat some food. All right, two. Two tickets, please. He pays the four silver this time for you. Aw. Yeah. And, you know, as he's getting himself settled, maybe he goes to the bathroom or something. The point is, you get a moment of, of alone time as you're in this area. And one of those gnomes bumps into you quite on purpose. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hey, hey. I'm very, very sorry. Gary. Brooks. He's wearing so much makeup, and on top of that, he's wearing like a big old clown hat to cover his face from the sun. And he's just like sunscreen protected makeup. Does that, wonders. That's very impressive. Thanks. Um, I got some impressive contacts now, Gary. Have you been enjoying the blood treats that I've been sending upon occasion? Yeah, oh my god, I just wanted to thank you for that. And hey, your friends aren't around, are they? And he keeps looking over his shoulder. Not in this exact vicinity, Good. but there's a dragon's guard right no, over there. Shh, 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 shh. God damn, Gary. I thought we was on the same team here, Gary G. I you just have a very threatening aura, so I didn't really know what you were going for. I thought, I thought we had something going here. I thought that, you know, you and I could work together. On? Um, just in general. God damn it, it's good to have friends, okay? You didn't hear about the Groove Clan? They kicked my ass out and mixed the tills don't take over. They, they kicked my ass out and mixed the tills don't take over. Anyway, I'm here with a friend. Snuck me in. <laughs> what are you hoping to achieve? Nothing. Just steal some shit. Okay, and you wanted to sneak in here to do that? No, 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 no. Hey, listen, I'll talk to you after. Talk to you after. Uh, got a little job over the winter break. And, uh, I don't know. I mean, I gotta talk to... I gotta talk to my, my new boss. See if he's allowing outsiders to join in. Between you and me. It's taking place in uh, your friend's hometown. <laughs> Sorry, you look so yummy. Ah. Uh... Right. You got a scab there in your hands. Did you cut yourself cooking, Gary? Not particularly the most dexterous. Yeah. Could I just take a bite? No. Could I just take one bite? God damn it, Gary, let me take a bite, Gary. His pocket. Mm. Okay, sorry, sorry. I've got the garlic sauce. Oh. I've got the garlic sauce. Shit, I gotta go. Around. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> and he runs off. Hey, Gary, what's up? Why do you look so pale? Says your date. Um. Ran into somebody I'd rather not run into. Oh. Huh. Ex-girlfriend? Oh, is no. Aurora here? I mean, I assume Aurora is here somewhere, but no. Oh. Honestly, I would be fine running into Aurora. Oh. Still have some feelings. Oh. 
it's all right, mate. I mean, Aurora's a nice person. That's that's neither a confirm or, nor a denial <laughs> on the feelings. Just in that the it wouldn't be weird to run into her because she goes here. So hang on, you, was that a yes or a no then on the feelings? Uh, Carrie, do you still have feelings for your ex? Um. Eating contest is starting in one minute. <laughs> And we fade away. <laughs> God damn it, Gary, you're so like, you know. Bad at it. Gary's yeah. very bad at it. <laughs> Are you ready, Cos? Yeah. So. As ready as I can be. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the poetry contest, they call up the next performers. Kamira does. Everybody, please give a warm welcome to my roommate, Cos Silvertrove. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hey. Happy yeah. to be here. Didn't mean to, but I'm still happy to be here. And of course, to our esteemed alumnus, the beloved Fane the Broker. And of course, a lot of people say, yeah, hoo, 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 hoo. And it's mostly coming from Grayson Wildermere and his buddies. Finally, the style of duel. Now remember the rules here. No uh, offensive magic, but mental is on the table. Let's see, and she, uh, there's a drum roll as she pulls from the hat. Oh, well, we got a classic. Good old stomp, stomp, clap. What do you think, Silver Trove? Ladies first. And by that, I mean myself. <laughs> Just kidding. Who goes first? No, for real. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> why, why don't you go first? Fine. Remind me, does this format have two verses each or just one verse each? Three. Three verses each. Okay, good. I'll pace myself then. I'm assuming we can alternate here. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I cheated and wrote some stuff down. Mm -hmm. From the rest of you, people begin their stomp, stomp, clap. Stomp, stomp, clap. It might be a bit too loud for the podcast, but can we do... Boom, boom, tss. Boom, boom, tss. Boom, boom, tss. Boom, boom, tss. Honey, are you aware that you're up against me? It looks fun, doesn't it? I get it. I agree. We all want to be popular. Not all of us can be. So go home, baby. You ain't worthy of a degree. All right. I see how it is. Okay, Fane. Listen, you're a real pain. You're trying to mess with me and my brain, but you're messing with the first member of the F Squad. Little known fact, Cos is also the F God. <laughs> All right, quiet down, quiet down. Boom, boom. You come, seeking a prize, thinking you have what it takes. I'm sorry, who are you? How much money do you make? Because those are the questions that you should ask. And putting little youth in their place is my favorite task. <laughs> okay, let's talk about some money. I mean, that must be a joke. You call yourself the broker, but you're more like Fade the Broke. I will talk like you're some intellectual, but that's a bigger lie than you calling yourself asexual. <laughs> oh, started. You're a real dick, sir, but let me tell you something. Let me paint you a picture. I don't need to get all up in your rump, but I heard from a little birdie that you recently got dumped. Oh. Well, it was a bit out of rhythm, but damn, that hurt. Okay. All right. Last verse, Spain. Make it count. <clears throat> Shut up. All throughout our cavios, they know me as Fane. You're a no one, Silver Trope, that ain't even your real name. Back to you then, kid. Let us see if you are a match. And make it snappy, will you? I have a carriage to catch. Two verses, that's all I need to end this strange thing. You don't need to come at me, come at this changeling. If you want to try to battle, I don't think you can take it. But hey, guess what? You can at least feign it till you make it. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you because I just handed you your first loss because you tried to toss Goss at cost. Oh, all right. I think I'm still going to have you guys roll <laughs> because okay. it's going to be comedy sports rules where it's the most cheers mm -hmm. and whoever was the most charismatic. Performance check. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, that's a two. Oh, no. no. Do I have inspiration? You have beloved inspiration. Oh, you do have I You're just urgent. Yes. 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 All right. And Dario um, is watching this. 25. Oh. Thank you. 
Well, I got a 21, so that's good. Let us hear it for Fane the Broker, everybody. All right, good, good. Now let us hear it for my roommate, Cos Silvertrail. Yeah! 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 Cos is very embarrassed at this. Cos <laughs> like goes over to shake Fane's hand, just like you did. You did really well. Thanks. That was fun. I was just kidding about Kira. Oh Kira. yeah, I was just kidding too. Um, uh, we're cool, right? Yeah. We're... Maybe, maybe. I'm gonna go back to my booth now. That was a, that was a bit much. I haven't performed in so long. God damn. Okay. <laughs> and he goes back. Meanwhile, Dario <laughs> just walks up to you, and like Kamir is nearby, and Kamir is glaring. But he's going in for the kiss. Mm. Do you resist? No. <laughs> okay. And people see that. And there's a lot of woo! Uh, and then Koss, I think, as the woos rise, Koss is just gonna be like, oh, um, this is, um, Misty, step away. <laughs> <laughs> Dario's just there <laughs> with both strings. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone! Thank you for joining us again this week. This episode was recorded in Watertown, Massachusetts, also known as the traditional land of the Pekaset and Anantum peoples. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of the talented musicians that helped bring this podcast to life with their amazing music. We've provided a link to their web pages in the description. I would also like to thank our talented players, Tyler Rubin, Rin Garnett, Michael Yang, and Nikki Aguilar Thompson. This story would not be the same without their wonderful creativity. I've been your host and DM, Alex Aguilar Thompson, and I hope to see you here again next week for another episode of Roleplay Radio.